if we do flux reconstruction via numerical dissipation. That is, if we have a finite volume scheme, we have multiple U's or a single U is, is going to be equivalent. We have a I minus 1, I and I plus 1 as cell averages. And we want to compute the flux at I plus half. The flux at I plus half can simply be the average of the flux applied on UI plus the flux applied on UI plus 1. We know if we just do that, we try that, the central flux scheme, it gives us horrible results once we create a shock wave, right? It basically blows up. And we did the stability analysis to show that this scheme conserves the third power of the solution U, and therefore it never allows the shock wave to dissipate the solution. But if we add something on top of it, if we add something on top of it that is proportional to delta x, first of all, and that is and multiplied by the characteristics, which is df du. And here we should be using a sufficient dissipation that is as big as the maximum absolute value of df du within the range ui and ui plus 1. So let me just uh, say a max of df du times a first order derivative of u, which is ui plus 1 minus ui divided by delta x. So why am I taking the first order derivative here? Because when you plug in this term in a finite volume discretization, remember a finite volume discretization, we have dui dt is equal to f of i minus 1 minus f I minus half minus f i plus half divided by delta t and that is going to give us first of all uh, a term corresponding to a central difference in the flux so u of i plus 1 minus f of u i minus 1 so this is the first term and the second term is going to give us plus Delta x here cancels with delta x here, and there is one more delta x here. So what we get is a term that is proportional to ui plus 1. So this is the i plus half part minus ui. But there is another contribution of ui from the i minus half part plus ui minus 1 times, times the df du. Right, So by adding a flux that is proportional to the first order derivative of u, we are essentially adding a second order derivative in the right hand side of this equation. So here, uh, another way to think about this is if we want to use finite volume scheme to discretize a second order spatial derivative, we should be adding a first order derivative in the flux function. And in this case, we want to, in order to achieve the same upwinding effect, irrespect, without knowing which side the characteristics comes from, we want to add a numerical dissipation that is proportional to delta x times the second order derivative of x. Therefore, in the flux, we add a term that is proportional to the first order derivative of, of u to x times the grid size. It's a very good question. This term is supposed to be delta x squared. Yes, if, if we want to discretize the second order derivative, it should be delta x squared. But in this case, we want to multiply another delta x here because if you remember uh, the the additional dissipation term is proportional to delta x. 
So what we want to discretize is delta x times the second order derivative, which means over here it is okay to have divided by delta x, right? Yes? Going back to the previous page where you were just showing uh, why we use delta x, um, the last green line, where, where did that arise? Where did that arise? So that arises in the Taylor series analysis of ui minus 1. So let me write it oh, over okay. here. So ui minus 1 is equal to ui minus uh, partial u partial x times delta x plus half of delta x square uh, partial square u partial x square, right? So if if we do that uh, and plug this ui minus 1 into this equation because we are dividing by delta x we get this term out so this term is going to be here and uh, we also have this term which we have delta x squared divided by delta x so we have a term that is proportional to the second order derivative so I think I'm missing a half over here. So half is going to be added to delta x. And uh, so if that's the case, I'm probably also missing a half over here. So the appropriate amount of numerical dissipation is half of delta x times the characteristic speed. So here I would also have half of that times the characteristic speed. So the question is, why don't we apply upwinding to the linear combinations of variables that has just a single characteristics? The, the, re the reason that is, uh, uh, that is difficult is because this linear combination changes in time. So for example, if we have a shock wave, then at the next time step, even at the same grid point, the shock wave may have swept over the grid point. And therefore, before the time step and after the time step, the particular linear combination, which depends on the matrix, which depends on the solution, can change dramatically. So the particular linear combination you, are, you, are, you can compute before that time step may become no longer the appropriate uh, linear combination to use for that characteristic after the time step. But that linear combination is only if it's a non-linear combination. That's right. That's right. Yes, if f is a linear function, then you can do exactly what you are saying, right? You can you can change the variables by performing linear combinations and uh, solve these equations according using the same scheme as scalar conservation laws. All right. Yes. Why is it important to take the maximum? Yeah. Actually, good question. Why is it important to take the maximum dfu? Uh, this is because the, Rossi, the this is because again of the entropy condition. So remember, the entropy condition says that no characteristics can emerge from a discontinuity, right? And in this case, because the the because we had a counterexample that doesn't satisfy the entropy condition in the Burgess equation. So if we have a u if we have an inverted shock wave where on the left u is equal to minus 1, on the right u is equal to plus 1. What happens is that the f on both, the flux on both left and right of the shock wave is going to be the same. So that is going to prevent du dt to change, that is prevent u to change by this uh, difference in the flux along. What's going to, in this scheme, in this uh, scheme, what is enforcing the entropy condition to be satisfied is actually this numerical dissipation here. And uh, the numerical dissipation here, we need to take the maximum dfdu here in order for the numerical dissipation to be sufficiently strong to satisfy the entropy condition. All right, so, so for example, the grid point here is going to be pulled downwards, the grid point here is going to be pulled upwards by this numerical dissipation. Does that answer your question? Yes. 
So in the system of conservation laws, we can apply the same scheme. We can compute the flux as the average between the flux on the left and the flux on the right, plus a delta x times the maximum of the absolute values of different characteristic speeds. For shallow water equation, this maximum dfdu would be the absolute value of u plus square root of gh. So this term times u plus 1 minus ui is going to be added to the flux. So this is the dissipation flux that you want to add to your central average flux to get the appropriate solution.